Welcome to the barren wasteland of 2B2T's spawn region, where Minecraft and the esoteric collide. Yes, in this video, we'll be taking an esoteric journey through time, exploring the birthplace of one of Minecraft's most infamous anarchy servers. So, put on your bifurcation theory hat, grab your transfinite set pickaxe, and let's dive in to the chaos of 2B2T's spawn region. It all began in 2010, when the first players stumbled upon this desolate wasteland. They were like the seeds of a quasi-crystal, the mysterious structures that were thought to be impossible until the discovery of their existence. In the early days, bases were like strange attractors, the chaotic patterns that emerge in the study of dynamical systems. Like the Lorenz attractor, the bases could be described by a set of non-linear differential equations, but were too complex to be fully understood. As players became more powerful, the spawn region turned into a Mandelbrot set, a fractal that reveals infinite complexity at every level of magnification. It was like a Julia set, with players creating complex structures that were defined by the properties of complex numbers and their iterated functions. But amidst the chaos, players still found time to have fun. They were like Raymond surfaces, complex manifolds that can be represented by an infinite number of complex functions. They would ride around on donkeys, build structures inspired by the moduli space of algebraic curves, and engage in PvP battles that were like the theory of algebraic stacks, where the outcome of the battle was determined by the properties of the stack. Now let me take a moment to rant about the theory of motives. It is a deep and complex area of mathematics that lies at the intersection of algebraic geometry, number theory, and topology. The idea is to associate a motive to every algebraic variety, which is essentially a mathematical object that captures the essential features of the variety. The theory of motives has been used to prove a number of important results in mathematics, such as the Welly conjectures and the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture. But let me ask you, does anyone really understand what a motive is? It's like trying to understand the inner workings of a black hole, or the meaning of life itself. The theory of motives is like a spectral sequence, a complicated tool used to break down a problem into simpler components, but which leaves the problem no less daunting. It's like trying to understand the moduli space of alien varieties or the p-adic Hodge theory. These are just fancy words that mathematicians use to sound smart, but in reality they're just as lost as the rest of us. In fact, I would argue that the theory of motives is like the Emperor's New Clothes, a concept that's so abstract and esoteric that it's only understood by a select few, and which is used to prop up the egos of those who claim to understand it. It's like trying to explain the mysteries of the universe using only the language of category theory, or trying to understand the origins of life using the language of homological algebra. And yet, despite its obscurity and its questionable value, the theory of motives continues to hold sway over the world of mathematics, like a mad scientist who's created a monster that you can no longer control. It's like a Mobius strip, a surface with only one side that twists and turns into unexpected ways, leading to a mathematical dead end. So the next time you hear a mathematician talk about motives, remember that it's just another example of the hubris and the arrogance that lies at the heart of the human condition. We may never fully understand the spawn region of 2B2T, or the mysteries of the universe, or the theory of motives, but that's okay. Sometimes it's better to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the beauty and chaos of the world around us, without trying to impose our own understanding on it. 